Hello everyone, Dr. Mongli here. So in this video, I will be explaining something which is generally not taught by most of the professors when they teach electron transport chain. So I will be explaining you a very fundamental basis of electron transport chain. So I will be explaining you why uh, electron transport chain, the transfer of electrons will go from complex 1 to complex 4. Why NADH plus H plus has to enter into complex 1 and why oxygen atom is acceptor of an electron. This is a very fundamental information that everyone should know to understand electron transport chain and why there is a pumping of protons from complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4. Now in order to understand this fundamental basis, we need to know what is called as redox pairs. Now the redox pairs that I would like to explain you is NADH plus H plus and NAD plus. Note that NADH plus H plus that is H and H plus in NADH plus H plus it will be holding on to electrons with high energy and if you release these electrons because these electrons are holding on to NADH plus H plus with a high energy so they it becomes a spontaneous reaction where the donation of the electron NADH plus H plus can easily donate electrons to an acceptor that is NAD plus so the redox change here so the basically the redox potential that is present between NADH plus H plus and NAD plus can be measured so it is around minus 320 millivolt see the redox potential of NADH plus H plus to NAD plus is minus 320 millivolt which can be written as 0 minus 0 0.32 volt so the redox potential is nothing but it is a voltage voltage difference between NADH plus H plus and NAD plus. Now let's see what is the redox potential of the redox pair that is oxygen and water. Now the oxygen and water so the redox potential that is the voltage difference between oxygen and water this is measured around like 800 plus 820 millivolt. So, which you can write it as plus 0 0.82 volt. Now you see the minus sign and the plus sign. So, the redox potential of NADH plus H plus is minus 320 millivolt. It means this has got a low redox potential. Minus 320 millivolt is a low redox potential compared to plus 820 millivolt. Now note that any molecule which has got low redox potential means it has got lower affinity for electrons. So low redox potential means lower affinity for electrons. It means this molecule is readily donating electrons. So this is a, it, this has got a high tendency to donate electrons. NADH plus H plus has got a higher tendency to donate electrons compared to oxygen here because oxygen has got redox but a high redox potential that is plus 820 millivolt it means it has got higher affinity for electrons because it has got high redox potential so higher affinity for electrons means this has got higher tendency to accept electrons so NADH plus H plus has got a higher tendency to donate electrons whereas oxygen has got higher tendency to accept electrons. Now NADH plus H plus it enters into complex 1 because complex 1 has got a little more positive redox potential means little higher redox potential than NADH plus H plus. That is why NADH plus H plus enters into complex 1 and donate electrons to complex 1. Now the complex one is going to transfer electrons to coenzyme Q because the redox potential of coenzyme Q is plus 30 millivolt.
redox potential of coenzyme Q is plus 30 millivolt. So now coenzyme Q is going to donate electrons to complex 3 and complex 3 is going to donate electron to cytochrome C and redox potential of cytochrome C is plus 230 millivolt. And now cytochrome C uh, is going to donate electrons to complex 4 and ultimately electrons will be accepted by oxygen because it has got high redox potential that is plus 820 millivolt. Now the electrons are flowing from complex 1 to complex 4 and finally accepted by oxygen. Basically NADH plus H plus which has got low redox potential means lower affinity for oxygen means it is readily releasing electrons or readily donating electrons and finally these electrons while moving from complex 1 to complex 4 and that they will be accepted by oxygen. Now in the flow of electron from complex 1 to complex 4 see the energy that is coming out of this that is oxidation of NADH plus H plus into NAD plus where minus 3 uh, the redox potential is minus 320 millivolt so this particular energy which is coming out of it will be helping in pumping off 4 protons from complex 1, 4 protons from complex 3 and 2 protons from complex 4 from matrix of mitochondria into intermembrane space. Now we need to look at the difference in the redox potential between NADH plus H plus and oxygen. So the redox potential difference that is referred as delta E so that difference of redox potential is minus 320 millivolt and plus 820 millivolt which is which comes around 100 uh, 1140 millivolts and this 1140 millivolt redox potential difference between NADH plus H plus to oxygen molecule here so this is a huge difference in the redox potential 1140 millivolt and this makes a delta G that is the standard free energy change of it is measured around minus 52.4 kilojoules sorry kilocals per mole. So the delta G uh, standard free energy change here that's a free energy change equals minus 52.4 kilocals per mole this much is the energy it's a huge energy here because of the redox potential difference between NADH plus H plus and oxygen final acceptor so 52 minus 52.4 kilocals if you can recall breakdown of ATP ATP if you break the terminal phosphate of ATP into ADP plus Pi, ADP plus Pi, it gives uh, the delta G for this is just minus 7.3 kilo kilocals per mole. That's breakdown of terminal phosphate in ATP will give you minus 7.3 kilocals per mole. Now you compare that with the delta G of oxidation of delta uh, NADH plus H plus into NAD plus and see the redox potential and the energy that is uh, the redox potential difference between NADH plus H plus and of final acceptor oxygen is 1140 millivolt and that amounts to free energy change of minus 52.4 kilocals per mole it means ATP to ADP plus PI gives just minus 7.3 kilocals if you calculate that the calculate the amount of ATP sorry the amount of energy that is released during this process it is sufficient to generate many number of ATPs so that is why it has been calculated that flow of electrons when oxidation of NADH plus H plus occurs into NAD plus when the flow of electron occurs from complex 1 to complex 4 and finally accepted by oxygen so it is going to help in pumping of four, uh, 10 protons in total, 4 in the complex 1, 4 in the complex 3 and 2 in the complex 4 and it has been calculated that considering all the inefficiency of the electron transport chain so oxidation of 1 NADH plus H plus into NAD plus 
our electron transport chain will generate 2.5 ATPs. 2.5 ATPs. This is only 2.5 ATPs are generated from oxidation of NADH plus H plus into NAD plus in electron transport chain. Otherwise, considering the redox potential difference and delta G that should come out of this is minus 52.4 kilocals per mole. But what our electron transport chain synthesizes is just 2.5 ATPs. So it means we are our electron transport chain is not an efficient machinery to capture all the energy that is coming out of oxidation of NADH plus H plus. Now we need to understand where, where this energy goes, why this is not captured. So some of the energy during this process it will be released as heat. And note that this heat is not wasted because heat is it is maintaining the body temperature that is 37 degrees centigrade and that helps in normal biological function of uh, enzymes because the optimum temperature for enzyme is 37 degrees centigrade and also it will keep the uh, cell keep the system exergonic overall thereby metabolic pathways will run in a forward direction. So it means our electron transport chain is not 100% efficient in capturing energy that is coming out of NADH plus H plus into NAD plus because it's a huge energy that is minus 52.4 kilocals per every NADH plus H plus oxidized into NAD plus. But our electron transport chain is just making 2.5 ATPs for NADH plus H plus being oxidized. So this is what this is exactly the reason why NADH plus H plus gets into complex one and go all the way electrons are going all the way to oxygen because of the change in the redox potential that is minus 320 millivolt to plus 820 millivolt difference of 1140 millivolt. So this you can apply, apply to FADH2 also FADH2 enters into complex two because it has got little more higher redox potential than NADH plus H plus that is why it is entering into complex 2 and from there electrons are transported from coenzyme Q and all the way to oxygen and oxidation of FADH2 will give uh, 1.5 ATPs per oxidation of FADH2 into FAD plus. So this is the very fundamental information that everyone should remember why electron transport chain is running from complex 1 to compl uh, uh, complex 4 that is NADH plus H plus into oxygen. This is the exactly why these things will go in this direction. It is all about redox potential that everyone should remember here. That's about it. I hope this video has helped you to understand uh, the fundamental information about electron transport chain. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Till then, take care.